aboard the good ship Vertigo. The time is 8.30 in the a.m. The weather outside is a brisk 200 degrees below zero. Hello, all you space guys and gals. This is your Maximum Max computer, and here to start your day off is a little something from the past, an intergalactic golden oldie from the 1980s. Hey, remember this one? That's great, huh? Do you mind trying to steer? Steer? This is a multi-billion dollar spacecraft, Coach, not a car. Hey, come on, just... Rodzinski, you are sick. And when we get back to Earth, I'm going to recommend a lobotomy. Listen, sir, you're not so perfect yourself. People who live in glass houses, know what I'm saying? And don't think we all haven't noticed you doing everything humanly possible to look down the front of Officer McHugh's blouse every time you get the chance. Shut your trap. Yes, sir. How are we today? How are we doing? Hello, little puppy. Hello, little kitty. What is that? Will John the trainee report to level three, section K, corridor nine, for an ultra antiseptic sanitizing operation? Dr. Stark, check out the observation window for a heavy revelation. This looks like a red-letter day for you, Doc. It's an unknown and undiscovered planet, and it looks like you discovered it, Doc. An unknown and undiscovered planet. And I discovered it. It was the dream of a lifetime. It's unbelievable. We must set up an expedition immediately. When the history books are written, this will be known as the, as the Stark Planet. Based on Dr. Stark's rather unusual information, we are going to land on that new planet, and we're going to take pictures and collect samples and bring them back to Earth. I hope you realize the importance of this discovery. We are on the threshold of something new and unknown. Gosh, I could shed a brick. Hey, come on in, guys. Let me lay some tones on you. Max, can you pinpoint this thing precisely for us? Okay, watch the monitor. This planet had an alien civilization which was jumping with some heavy-duty creatures. Some bad vibes in the atmosphere caused an evolutionary change in these creatures and produced some mean dudes, like Attila the alien who ate an entire city. Pretty soon, everybody was into heavy violence, getting down and dirty. 
After an all-out lack of communication, the entire civilization was wasted. But check it out for yourselves. Maybe Rudzinski can find some old alien porn lying around. Okay, I'll be talking to you later, Buster. You got me? Temperance? Max, please. This is of the utmost importance. Hey, that's it. Just suit up, board the shuttle, and check it out. Ten, nine, eight, seven, eight, six, nine, seven, ten. It's very funny. Thank you. Now I'll have to do it all over again. Ten, nine, eight, fourteen, seven, thirty-three and six, a third, five, seven, four, three, two, one. Ike. to land, uh, buses up, backup system stable, landing gear in position. He's making it up. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Shut your traps. We're down. I've run a check on the atmospheric conditions. The oxygen seems to be compatible with our own. That's my scientific way of saying we won't die without our hats on. <laughs> I got my hat on. Helmets. Right. My God. I feel like Christopher Columbus in search of a new world. Me too. Max, open the shuttle door. You got it. Too crazy? I guess that college education comes in pretty handy, huh, Coach? What? Plant. Be sure to get some of that kitty litter in there, Doc. What? Kitty litter with the shrub. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say this was some kind of weird city. It's impossible. Outside of that plant we discovered, there doesn't seem to be any sign of life anywhere. Hey! No! A sign of life, baby. <gasps> What's the matter? Did I scare you? Calm yourself. <laughs> Calm yourself. Don't let the little scum sucker get to you. Look, I found some jelly. Jelly? Me see that. My God. It appears to be some kind of living organism. Give it to me. It doesn't seem to want to come off my finger. It lights me. Pull it off. Pull it off? It just doesn't. I can't. It's stuck. I want it. I, I want you to have it, but it won't come off my finger. Oh, look it. it. Seems to like me. I need this organism. It just doesn't seem to want to go to you. See if you can get it into the sample case. Hey, hey, now wait a minute, Doc. Don't be doing that. We don't want this piece of snot on board our spaceship. Get loose. We have it. You know what I mean? Oh, boy. Go. Oh! Sorry. Sorry. A living, breathing organism. And I discovered it. They'll have to call it the Stark Organism. Just a moment, Doctor. Um, it was John who did discover the organism. I think we should give credit where credit is due. Credit? What are you going to 
to call it. A John organism? It's mine. Rodzinski, come to the mailroom. Your latest issue of Space Girls in Bondage magazine has arrived. Central, and they requested that we return to it. Excellent. <laughs> as soon as to start studying my discoveries. Max, what course are we on? It's a far out course, Captain. Deep into the cosmos and headed for infinity. Hey, I like that. Why on earth did they ever make these abusive, emotionally unstable computers? Okay, just trying to keep things light. Hey, I hate to break this up, but it's dinner time. It's 7.30 in the p.m., and this should put you in the mood. I'm hungry. What is this delicacy tonight? Ah, synthetic duck with synthetic a la orange. Seems a little tough, John Boy. Now, is that any way to talk after John spent all afternoon preparing this meal? What's the matter, doctor? You're not eating. I'm afraid I have no appetite. Uh, well, it's been two weeks since that historic journey. I have not lost the sense of having done something really great. I haven't lost that sense either. You know, I, I, I think we all still have that sense. Doctor, how is our living organism doing? I told you I'm not hungry. I didn't ask you to eat it. The organism, Doctor, how's it doing? Oh, <laughs> sorry, I misunderstood. Fine, everything's fine. Nothing's wrong. Thank you, Dory. Everything's good. Swell. I'm just hungry, I suppose. Oh, uh, anyone for dessert? Because I, I prepared a little dessert, if you'd like. I'd love some. What is it? Synthetic pie. Oh, please. And you wonder why I want to eat out all the time. Ratsinski, if you don't like the food, then why don't you cook? Hey, I'll cook. I'll cook for you, baby. Huh? Dinner for two. Crab cakes. A little red wine. And for the main course, you baby. Rodzinski, if you don't stop annoying people, I'm going to put you on report. Mercy me. Not on report. Quiver, quiver, quiver. That does it. You're on report. If you'll excuse me, put it in the oven. I have work to do. Oh, Doctor, uh, aren't you going to see the movie with us? No, it really might relax you. I'm perfectly relaxed. Science relaxes me. Would you care for some pie before you? Science is my pie. Curiosity is my sweet tooth. Knowledge is my candy. Goodbye. <laughs> You know, I, I think the dock has entered the land of the loon. No, no, it's it's pressure, that's all. It gets to all of us yeah. sooner or later. Yes. Pressure. The demon of space. Ah, Captain Jameson. May I speak with you a moment, sir? Of course, of course. Just let me avoid these meteors here first. <laughs> oh, close call. Just part of the everyday danger space travel. <laughs> well, what can I do for you? Oh, I was just checking to make sure you're going to be in the talent show. Oh, of course. Oh, excuse me. Right back on course. 
Never a moment's rest. Oh, by the way, have you seen Radzinski? I need to know if he's going to be in the show. Oh, please, not Radzinski. It's bad enough having him in the audience. But I'm short on talent, sir. You are in charge of morale. Now, you know what happened to the crew the last time he did his act. It's true. Well, it serves him right anyway for never letting anybody know where he is. Well, until tonight, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there with a flourish. Folks. Quiet. It's time to start. Folks, quiet. There's three people in the audience. Tonight is talent night. And how about a nice big hand for our first performer? <laughs> Which is me. <laughs> well, I will now entertain you with a dramatic reading from the ship's log. Tuesday, December 4th, 2012. Performed our morning duties. Had breakfast. Synthetic flapjacks. And sinker. Is he kidding with us? Hey, who gives a shit? Shut your trap. The afternoon past slow the night passed quickly sleep came to the vertigo at 11.30 Now, next on the program will be John with a lively discussion on synthetic cooking. Cooking with John. Hello. Welcome to Cooking with John. I'm John. No shit, Sherlock. Tonight, we'll be learning how to prepare synthetic turkey with stuffing. First, mix your turkey synthetics in a bowl until it becomes a mealy paste. Get out your synthetic turkey bone structure. And cover the structure with a mealy paste. Mmm, looks yummy already. Prepare your synthetic stuffing. Insert your hand into the anal area of your turkey structure and enter the stuffing. Place your synthetic turkey and stuffing into the microwave oven and let it cook for five seconds. Ah, there you have it. Synthetic turkey with stuffing. All through the wonder of modern cooking. There'll be samples for everyone after the show. Thank you for watching Cooking with John. Get away from me with that stuff. Oh, it's very good, you know. I, I well, it. it's fresh. now, the uh, moment that we've all been waiting for. Officer Annie McHugh will now perform a song for us. Yeah! Woo! That's great! Yeah!
Jupiter, I buy it. Three, four. Dr. Stark, please check the jelly. I think it's growing. Give me the dice. Well, I'll tell you. It might rain. I don't know. <laughs> it might be sunny, maybe cloudy. I'll tell you. Bring a coat. Couldn't hurt. Thank you, Grace, for another in-depth weather report. You don't have to get testy about it. You know so much about the weather you predict. Now, girls, I don't think Margie was being testy. Oh, yes, she was. Margie was being testy. Yes, there you go. Grace, Margie, you will never guess what happened today. In Virginia, doctors reported the first successful body transplant. The body transplant was performed on Mr. Harvey Furman of Virginia. Mr. Furman declared... I feel like a new man. There are many wonderful advantages to my new body. Everything has been transplanted and rearranged for greater strength and mobility. The only problem is I have to take a leak, and I don't know where my pee-pee is. Bless his heart. Oh, oh dear me. <laughs> now, he didn't really say that. <laughs> On my mother's grave. Oh, is your mother dead? Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. And you know what? Have I got a treat for you two today. Walter Chamberlain here in Philadelphia, where a guerrilla force from Mars launched an invasion last night. This morning, a giant guerrilla attacked downtown Philly. Earlier today, guerrilla leader Bonzo Khan announced at a press conference... We will continue our war against Philadelphia until we have established an independent Martian state. And later on in our Kathy Clatch phone-in segment, we'll see how you feel when we discuss murder. It kills me. <laughs> Very cute. <laughs> It's another day in space. Pretty much the same as yesterday. Probably be the same tomorrow. Let's kick things off with this rocket number. Hello, little telepathies organisms. Let me sound on the weird vibrating planet. How are you today? Hello, good morning. Rise and shine, Rodzinski. Officer McHugh. Oh, John, hi. Hi, hi. Good morning. Good morning. I just wondered if you'd, you'd like to sample my, my latest entree. Oh, what is it? Synthetic chicken cordon blue. Well, you know, I just had a big snack in my office, just sort of like nutrition. Oh, but I, I really need you to sample it because, you know, nobody else likes to sample things, and you're just... I, I trust your opinion so much. Oh, well, John, Could I... Could you do that for me, please? Okay? Please. Okay. Oh, 
Mm. Would you like some pink liquid? Mm. 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 Another bite? No. Oh. 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 So, so you liked it then? Oh, good. Because we're having this for dinner tonight. Officer McHugh. Dr. Stark. I must speak with you. Yes? I don't want to appear in any way uh, ominous. Yes? You remember our expedition to that uh, unknown, uncharted, and slightly weird planet? Of course I do, Doctor. A momentous occasion. You remember that small gelatinous substance which we took with us? And which is now locked in a sample vault? Dr. Stark? I sense something is troubling you. Troubling is not the exact word I would use. Amazed, incredulous, mind boggled. Any of those words will be appropriate. I'm telling you this because the others may react stupidly. The organism seems to be growing. You mean? Precisely. I've checked it twice. And each time there's been substantial growth. My God. Precisely. My examinations were two weeks apart. And as another two weeks have elapsed, it's time to check the organism again. Frankly, I'd like you there as a witness. Perhaps if we got the others, it might be good because I'm not too sure that I'm very good at this, you know, all by myself. Um, or that. Uh... I must be perfectly honest with you and tell you that it took a great deal of persuasion on my part to get Dr. Stark to allow me to tell you all this. He was afraid that you might behave rashly or stupidly. So what began as a small gelatinous organism has now turned into a larger living, breathing, not to mention screaming organism. Now, very calmly, what do we do? Zap it. Kill the little loogie. Hold me back. You crazy? Do you realize what this means for science and mankind? Gee, Doc, I'm sorry. I can't speak for science, but I can definitely speak for mankind. And I say, kill the mother. Now that we've heard the humanist argument, I will tell you my decision as captain. We will keep that thing locked securely in a sample vault until we get back to Earth. And uh, when I'm about 100 uh, miles away from it, they can open up that sample vault and do with it what they wish. Very noble. There's only one thing, and I just throw this out as an unbiased third party. Whatever's in that vault did not sound too happy about being in there. Well, <laughs> whatever it likes or doesn't like makes no difference because the door to that sample vault is strong enough to withstand any eventuality. Captain Jameson is right. So there's no need for any of us to behave rashly. Dr. Stark is right. We all have to remain calm as cucumbers. Officer McHugh is right. If the door to the sample vault is that strong, then we have nothing to worry about. John is right. No, I'm the one who said what John said. What's that? About no. the door being strong enough to withstand any yes. event. Okay, you're right. Dr. Stark right. is right. right because he Dr. said... Dr. Stark was right originally. Well, I mean, by right putting right it into the camera, no, 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 He's back in his boldest, most exciting adventure yet. The dirtiest cop of them all, Dirty Harry. Hey, you old fart. Now listen to me, bunk. You're an asshole. He's mean, and he's out to clean up the city. Good time for the old time tonight. <laughs> hey, what is this, a joke? We're gonna hurt you now, Grandpa. 
<laughs> it's Dirty Harry, meaner than ever, in Dirty Harry Strikes Back. This picture is rated morally objectionable for everyone. Come on, give me some leeway. Huh? Nobody ever gives me any leeway! Shh! Ah, shut up. I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm uptight. I have these dreams at night in which I'm taunted by disembodied breasts and thighs. I need a woman, McHugh. Remember, a major part of our training was to remain asexual. I am asexual. A sexual fiend. You look so pretty sitting there in your sexy little space outfit. Come on, one little kiss. One little kiss. Rodzinski, you mm. must keep telling yourself that I am not a woman. You are. No, I'm not. Sure. I am a crew person. Well, too. The same as you, Captain Jameson, Dr. Stark, and John. One big difference. I am not a piece of tail. Yes, I am not a sexy whiz bang, yes, nor am I any of those other names you so love to call me behind my back. Oh, you heard about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, why don't you return to your quarters and shave? Quite the little morale booster, aren't we, McHugh? Well, I'm happy to be of service. Uh-huh. Yeah. You gave me such a start. Oh! Max, may I please have a little Hawaiian music this afternoon? Not a chance. I said please, Max. You shrink the heads and I'll pick the platters. You know something? One of these days when you have a little time, you ought to come into my office and we'll check out that attitude problem of yours. Hey, I've got no problem. I'm just doing my thing. So tight, McHugh. What are you doing? Well, I just thought you might like a little company, you know. Company? Company? Yeah, you know, a little intimate company. Rodzinski, uh, if I were being attacked by a pack of wild Saturnian bush pigs, and you possessed the only bush pig blaster in the universe, I uh, would not uh, want uh, your uh, company. Uh, oh, okay, McHugh. <laughs> How you feel about it? Uh, you're sure you don't? You don't? Ah! Oh, jeez! Love you. Don't ever change.
Brzezinski. It isn't as though I haven't given you fair warning. Now you see what you've done, Doc? You let something weird into our ship here. Now we're all in danger. We don't know what it is. Only out of control. We're completely at the mercy of the government. We don't know what it is. Shut up, you stupid cretin. I tell you, this is the greatest discovery mankind may ever make. Hold on there a minute, Doc. I give the orders around here. Now, I say, we go down there. This may be the greatest discovery mankind may ever make. A for originality, Krasinski. Don't push too far. We mustn't waste any time. Perhaps I'll take this. Captain Jameson, they just delivered your pizza. Pick it up. an unknown commodity doesn't mean to say we've got to behave like a lot of scared jack rabbits yeah doc but but it's that unknown part that gets to me i mean why, why doesn't the thing just come out in the open what is it scared <laughs> i mean why, why doesn't it come out and show its face is it a coward huh you know what i think i think it's shy all the wishy for people, people who are afraid to come out in the open. Huh? <laughs> huh? You know, maybe it's a chicken. Huh? Is it a chicken? Huh? Huh? Discovery for mankind. Oh, will you shut up with that mankind baloney? Well, I'm going to go and see if it's still there. Good idea. What? No. No, you're supposed to say, don't go. Look, you're the big heroic captain, coach. Go see if it's still there. It is not that I don't want to go, but I am the captain. And you realize if something happens to me, who will be in charge? Rodzinski here. 
Well, Selma, he's got to see if it's still there. I'd go, but someone has to stand here and have the willies. All right, then. I'm the captain. I will go. Good luck. That scared us half to death. Don't you know we're at our wit's end? We thought you were the creature. Well, you got to admit, there is a certain resemblance. Watch it, Lieutenant. <laughs> I really must object to your use of the word creature. It's inflammatory and highly prejudiced. It's a living organism. Oh. Dr. Stark, if I may speak with you for a moment. Dr. Stark, it is now an escape living organism. Doctor, what are we going to do? Whatever we do, we must keep our behavior rational and remain calm. Look, can we get out of here? Boy, was that thing something, huh? I mean, all that, that drool and, and, and slime. You know, slop. He's a definitely unpleasant body order, too. I mean, it's just, just dripping with goo. A, a mass of unrepentant jism. Shut up! So, what to do? Any suggestions, anybody? I suggest that we go and find this organism. Show it that we mean no harm, that we're friendly. This thing shrieks like a banshee and hides in dark corridors. How do you call that friendly? How do you reason with goo, Doc? How do you reason with a slimy non-entity? The same way that we reason with you, Rodzinski. <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit that Dr. Stark may have a point. I mean, maybe this thing is just as scared of us as we are of it. But now the question is, who goes? I suppose, to be perfectly fair, we ought to draw lots. Now, what uh, Officer McHugh is doing is cutting up pieces of paper. They'll all be the same length except one. And that one will be shorter. All right. Let's have a go with this. Well, it's all in the hands of fate now. John, I want you to go out there and know that everything is going to be all right. You could end up a hero. Well, I... I guess I have to face up to my responsibilities. Right? That's the spirit. I guess I have to find the courage and do what has to be done. Right? Yes. Too bad. Well, then I guess... I'm the chosen one. Fate has given me the short paper, and I have to accept the challenge. Remember David and Goliath, Moses and the Pharaoh, Sodom and Gomorrah. I can do it! Hi, gang. Got a little problem with the big bad blob? Max. 
Can you pinpoint precisely where this thing is for us? Not a chance. Max, don't be a snip now. Are there foreign bodies on this craft? Let's see. There he is. Ugly, isn't he? Three quarter nine. <laughs> oh! John boy. John, luck. Level three, quarter nine, section BB. This is it. But it ate the camera. Be nice to it, John. Lure it out. We'll shoot it with a tranquilizer gun. That's it. I'll get the tranquilizer gun. John, lure it out. Lure it out? Lure it out! Lure it out. Lure it out. Lure it. Lure it. Lure it. Good Lure it. 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 Lure Absolutely amazing. It's ugly. Absolutely ugly. To think that he could have enlarged himself so quickly. You know, it's absolutely amazing. You know, I think we all owe John a word of thanks for the courage that he's shown. John? John boy. Come on now, let's not canonize the guy just because he got a smaller paper, huh? What's the matter? Not getting enough attention? <laughs> almost as if it were trying to talk to me. You know, it almost sounds musical. Yeah? Well, if that's music, I'm a horse's ass. Well, it must be music. Maybe it's singing a song in Creature. Singing a song in Creature? That's good, Sonny. Real good. We're talking about goo here. Goo doesn't make musical noises. We're talking about the unknown. Anything is possible. Dr. Stark, I have an idea. What is it? Why don't we wire this thing into Max? That way he'd be able to translate whatever it's trying to tell us in our own language. Not so? Of course. Brilliant. That way we'd know once and for all if this thing is friendly or not. Precisely. The first time in history we'll be able to hear what a being from another planet is trying to communicate. My God! Dr. Stark, what do you think it's trying to say to us? We shall see. We shall see. <laughs> Heady with anticipation. I think we all are, Dr. Stark. I'm a quiver with excitement. All right, attention, everyone. For the first time in history, we may hear what a being from another world is trying to communicate to us. My God. 
Switch on the translating circuits. I want to eat your face. It could just be so yummy. I'd like to have your face in my tummy. I want to eat your smile. Your smile is so beguiling. If I could eat your smile. I'd be smiling Hey I want to eat Your arm I want to eat Your leg So won't you please be Nice people And don't make Me Don't you tease me I want to eat your face I got to eat your face So let me eat that wonderful, marvelous, beautiful Fabulous face I want to eat your face understand the ramifications of what we just seen? Um, doctor, did you happen to catch the lyrics? Lyrics? What do I care about lyrics? This is an alien organism. You were expecting Rogers and Hart. What I meant was, did you happen to catch the meaning of the lyrics? What do I care for that sort of thing? This is a major scientific discovery. This could change the face of history. You don't understand, Doctor. This thing wants to eat the face of history. It is friendly. This is not an antagonistic organism. Look at it. The human race is always so quick to be on the defensive. Whatever happened to the milk of human kindness? I think you're it, Doc. So you think it's antagonistic, do you? 
So you think it will hurt you? So you think that this is something other than just a harmless little ditty? Science must always prove itself to skeptics. Doctor! 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 Doctor, Doctor start Doctor, letting... this Doctor, thing wants to read the face of history. Doctor! Doctor. You stupid people. Always afraid of the unknown. Just because you don't know about something doesn't mean it's going to bite you. You have to have faith. You have to have trust. Now, if you have faith and trust, then the unknown will have faith and trust. I tell you, this creature means no harm. Oh! It's playing. Just having fun. It's joking. <laughs> it, it's a game. Oh! 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 Appears to have eaten, Dr. Stark. Appears? Huh, that was unmitigated eating. Let's just hope that Dr. Stark is in a better world. He's in that thing's stomach is where he is. Hey, are we gonna take this? Let's get out of here. Figure out the next step. The sooner the better. Wait a minute. I think we ought to give him a proper burial. He was a courageous man, but in the end, he let scientific curiosity rule instead of common sense. We salute you, Dr. Stark. You salute him. I don't want to salute him. He's the one who let that pig of a slime on board in the first place. There went a man. There went a box with a pair of glasses, and look, if we don't do something, we're all going to end up in empty boxes. Wait a minute. Well, we don't want to antagonize it any further. Well, what are we gonna do? Ask it to leave? We gotta kill it. We have to kill it, do we? And how do you propose that we do that? Burn the sucker. Shoot it in the eye. Stab it. I'll tell you how we can kill it, Rodzinski. We'll let it eat you. That will kill anything. Is that so? Yeah. Yeah, you know what I think? Yeah. Buddy? I think your front porch light is burned. Yeah. yeah. Let's stop this petty quarreling so we can figure this thing out. How about this? We know the tranquilizer gun worked on it once. So what if we shoot it again with the gun and then dispose of the thing out in space? Oh, I like that. We can use the tranquilizer gun and then dispose of it in space. Now, let's get back to the observation lab and show this thing that it can't fool around with humanity. Everybody ready? What now? Captain! And here's a little something dedicated to the memory of the late, great Dr. Stark. This calls for drastic action. We'll split up into two teams. The first team to find the creature will radio the other team immediately. Now the teams I choose, Officer McHugh. Oh, no, you don't. I want to be on McHugh's team. Over my dead body. Rodzinski, I'm the captain. You and John are the other team. Over my dead body. Listen, the only logical solution to this is Captain Jameson and Rodzinski are a team. Over my dead body. If we keep arguing like this, it's going to be over all our dead bodies. All body. right, all right. Reluctantly, I say, Rodzinski and I are one team. Officer McHugh and John are the other team. Now, we'll split up and search every inch of the spaceship. Or is that too much for your minuscule brain to handle, Rodzinski? I think I get your drip. We're a team. We're a team. I'll be in your team.
not sure. Why don't we leave? No, no, no. Come on, have courage. Stay close. There's strength in numbers. Oh. Eight. Four. No, Joe. Twelve. That's not what I meant. Six. some way to get this thing out in the open without being attacked immediately. I mean, there must be some way to lull its senses for just a few moments. Although I don't know what good that would do. It ate the tranquilizer gun. It eats everything. Doesn't it ever get full? Boy, all that singing and dancing must have really given it an appetite. <laughs> That's it, John. What, what, what is it? Singing and dancing. We've seen it do two things, right? eat, and in its own native, primitive way, sing and dance. Now, if we approach it on its own terms, maybe we could arouse its curiosity for a few moments. And if we plan this exactly right, then that's all we'd need. What do you say? Is it worth a try? Okay, let's see. Beatles? No, I don't think so. Not no, now. What are we doing? We have, if this thing likes music, then it's going to get music. No, you you dance, don't you? No, I don't dance. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do you sing? Well, I sing not as well as I dance. Well, well, we'll rehearse it. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. There's dance. tangles. I don't want tangles, and none of this moves music from Mars. That won't do. So, ah! Ah! Here it is. This what is, is perfect. Perfect. Bachelor Bills? Five. Six, seven, two, where? It would help if you stayed on the beat. Oh, there's a beat. Five, six. How does it go? Max, we're 
We're going to need your complete cooperation. Max has the facts. Come on, Max. This is no time to be a little snot. Please, we need your help. You want the facts? Just ask Max. We're going to let the creature know exactly where we are. And that's going to be near airlock exit number four. When John gives you the signal, you start the music. Do you understand, Max? You got it. What if it's waiting around the corner? Well, then I'd say it's tough beans for us, but we're not going to find out just standing here. Oh, then let's stand here. And this is a chance we have to take. You're right. You're absolutely right. You, you stay here and I, 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 I'll, I'll go and check. Oh, you don't have to do that. Oh, good. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can't let you go first. I mean, if it is there and it did eat you before it ate me, I'd, 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 I'd never forgive myself. So I'll just go first and you wait here really yes okay so I, i'm going now all right and i'll just see if anything's there be careful i'll uh, be very careful all right. and uh throw your shoulders back i have my morale up morale up good I'm just gonna step around Shh. be quiet tippy toe all right It's safe. What? What is it? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to eat your thing. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Run for your life! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? What? I think we lost it. Oh. Oh, does that thing give me the creeps? Oh, all right. Just a couple more quarters and we'll be near the airlock exit. Come on. I'm running. John, just move your fire over here. First of all, we have to stay on this side of the yellow line this side. and somehow get the creature on that side. Do you understand that? Okay, then I'll stay on okay. this side. Then we press the standby bar and the automatic shield comes down. Yes, and then we press the airlock open and then whoosh, the creature's gone out whoosh. into space forever. Whoosh. Okay. Now all we have to do is get it here. How would you suggest that we might do that? Call it? Right. Call it. Thing. Right? Yes. Thing. No. It's not coming. It'll come here. Okay. Creature. Yeah. Dripping. Come on now. Let's come and get us. Shoot's on. Yeah. Deserve to reprieve, deserve to 
fair shake deserved a good deal. So please, we're down on our knees. We've been on rough seas. Just throw those keys to these two. So here we are, we go bar to bar. We're drowning our tears in numerous years. Here's hoping we find someone who'll be kind to two. Bills, who are blue. Bills, who turn us into new. Bills, we're two. Bills, and we're looking for Expecting light meteor showers later in the day with skies clearing by evening. John, your mother called. She just wanted to know if you're getting enough to eat. Just you and me now. We're all alone. <laughs> it was a nightmare, John. The creature's gone. 